might also want to think about what else does this comic apply to find a different audience than just the comic audience. Uh, I'm working on a project now that might link into something from my, my hometown and uh, you know maybe that there's a sale there or two uh, based on that. Uh, also I'm trying to, there was something else you said I'm trying to remember. Confidence. Confidence. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, confidence. Uh, there are, at least in Columbus, I know, and I know they're, they're all over the place, there are a lot of collectives, uh, local cartoonists that band together and kind of give each other critiques. Uh, I, I belong to the Sunday Comics group here in town. Uh, we, meet up at the Crim we meet up at the Crimson Cup up in Clintonville every Wednesday night, and I think once a, I don't get to the Sunday, actual Sunday meeting, which is uh, like the third Sunday on, on, uh, of every month. Also, there's another group called Panel, I know, and, and, and uh, there's other ones I'm not even aware of here, but uh, I've heard of a few other ones outside of town going on, I think, down your end. There's yeah, some, Lexington Comic Creators Group, um, there's, a, there's a Nashville one, there's a couple different so, ones that are regional to the area. The, the guys in that group are across the board, people doing professional work to people like me who just kind of hang around with the mini-comic stuff, so. I, I've got one more I want to say, and just that I think always, imagine that the worst case scenario is likely. Um, because that way you don't come to a convention thinking, oh, I'm sure to sell $1,000 worth of books, because you're not. You're going to sell $50 worth of books, <laughs> or $200 worth of books. And you know, your first couple of shows, you're not going to sell any books. <laughs> <laughs> Last year at Mid-Ohio, my second con ever, I sold one book. So it takes a long you time. Got, you got to let people see you, because the same people that walk this con are the same people that walk space. Are the same people that walk in. A little difference. In the a little difference. But yeah. if they see you at shows, yeah. they may not take a chance on you at this show. But when they see you at the next show, oh, I remember him from Mid Ohio, and they'll come up and take a chance on your voice. The more you do, the more you look like a real person who actually exists. You know, and the more real you look, the more serious they'll take you. Um, conventions are an invaluable resource, both uh, having a table and just going yourself before you're, you know, while you're getting yourself ready to have a table. You, you mentioned uh, portfolio reviews. Uh, I got, I've got a degree in illustration, but I learned more about how to do comics by getting my portfolio reviewed from people at tables at conventions than I learned in five years at art school. You know, I'm not saying that the art school didn't teach me a lot, but it didn't teach me a thing about comics. Next to sitting down with the people who did this professionally and having them look at my work because they knew what they were looking at. And don't be afraid to talk to people. Don't ever feel like, you know, oh, he's too big, or oh, he's too small. Definitely don't think he's too small. You know, if, just because they don't have a name you recognize, do you like right. their work? Are they doing something that impresses you? Are, you? are they doing something you would like to do? Ask them how they do it. And for the most part, I mean, I can speak for myself, and I know I can speak for a lot of other people. Uh, I wish that I had people I could have talked to when I was trying to figure this out instead of having to spend years making mistakes and sort of yeah. slowly putting one foot in front of the other. There was so much hit or miss that we had to go through to try and figure out where we are. And uh, we've come from, you know, doing one con a year, bringing it up to three, to five, to, you know, seven, ten, fifteen, and now we're at twenty conventions a year. And when I'm speaking to someone brought up about going to different places, we harp on this all the time. Don't discount those anime shows, guys. Yeah, anime because shows that's, are huge. that's comics, too. You might be like, oh, but they're so different. You know what? It's all storytelling. All of it. Comics is comics. And mm -hmm. it goes back to there's no name too small. It's all just comics. You, any preconceived notions you have, any biases you have, get rid of them. Lose them. Because the only thing that they're going to hurt is you. Right. The and only thing they're going to hold back is you. Everything is worth a try when you're trying to get to that new audience. Because I'll tell you another thing, this audience here, by and large, that's here at this place, they've made their decisions on what they love. They're already in love with Superman and Spider-Man and their hearts belong to them. So it's very hard to get them to go for something new. And that's in part two, look at the age, you know, and it's, it's maybe offensive or something to bring this up, but your average age is 35 and above at this show. And at 35 years old, not always, but a lot of times you made your decision. If you go to one of those anime shows, those shows have a lot of people who haven't made up their minds about the only thing they like. They're still interested in a variety of things. I have a friend who makes a killing at craft shows. He takes his comics and does his art at craft shows. You never know. 
Just you never know until you try. I was sitting in on the panel in San Diego, and they made the comment that uh, it was a small and independent press panel, much like this one. And they, they kind of they said, if you're new to this, and this is your first book, and this may be your your greatest thing ever you're wanting to share with the world, be prepared to knit for the first two years. Because <laughs> it's going to be just quiet. It, it's perseverance, I think. It's, it's a willingness to stick this out and be here again and again. And if you're an artist, it's that, you know, they asked in a marble panel, what's the best way to become a marble artist? They said, draw and never stop drawing. Draw 24-7. Draw until you can't draw. And the same goes for writing. Absolutely. And you want to be a writer. Absolutely. Write every day. It doesn't have to be a comic book. It can just be your journal. Right. Write every day. You don't have to write for six hours. But every day, write something. And I would say, pick something that you're passionate about. Um, I think everyone's kind of been saying about hit on it, just how much work it really is, not just to create comic books, but independent comic books, because there's so much more on your shoulders. You're not working for someone who's giving you a script and then they're going to color it and letter it and distribute it and market it and all of that. I mean, you're everyone, or you're most of those people. Um, and so you're with this thing all of the time, and it, it lives or it dies on your shoulders. And if you don't believe in it, if you don't love it, if you don't want to spend more time with it than you spend with your husband and your mom and your friends and your TV and your hobbies and everything else that you thought that you loved to do, if I mean, it will eat up your life if you really want it to succeed. And so I would say pick something that you're like crazy in love with, that you can not only manage to spend that much time about it, but you still think about it first when you wake up at, in the morning. And you can't fall asleep at night because you think like you're running through it in your head. And if you can find a story that you're that excited about, then that's a good thing, I think. Because you really have to believe in it. And you really have to be able to sell it to other people. I mean, you know, if someone comes up to your booth at a convention and they're like, what's your book about? You're kind of sheepish and you kind of ramble for two minutes and they're just kind of waiting for you to stop so they can leave. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I say it in like two sentences. Like, my book's about a high school girl who dreams about the Revolutionary War. And, you know, there you have it. it. That's it in a nutshell. And people are usually interested after that. They weren't expecting that to come out of my mouth. So then they, then they kind of lean in. And then you can kind of start talking to them, engage them. But I just, I think that, you know, people were kind of up here hitting on the importance of conventions. But it, I think it really is important because as an independent creator, you, you aren't with a big company who's working for you. And so you really do have to use this community that assembles at these conventions all over the country, different places and times, and start being able to rely on them so that like you're not isolated. So I just think networking is a really huge thing. So you, I mean, I, I think that by nature, most creators are um, introverted and insecure. Uh, we don't like to, you know, we don't think that our good work is good enough for the most part, and we, you know, have a hard time like talking to other people about it. And I mean, really, all I can say is you just have to get over it. Um, you have to get over it, and you have to be able to be confident and cheerful and, you know, optimistic about your own project, or no one else is going to want to, you know, look at it. I mean, if I walk through Artist Alley and you're sitting there and you look sad and depressed and you look like no one's bought a book all day, I'm not going to come talk to you. I'm going to put my head down, walk really fast and get past you before you try to engage me so that I have to stand there and it's awkward. I mean, so you want to be the kind of person that's inviting and uh, that you're like spreading the word on it and stuff like that. So I think that kind of stuff is important at any job, but especially when you're like creating your own business uh, all on your own. And to add to, to something that everybody's touched on a little bit, another thing, if you're serious about becoming an independent creator, you have to have a marketing mindset. And you have to, I mean, you have to understand, and like what she was saying, stepping outside of yourself, you have to understand that nobody's gonna sell your book for you. And uh, she said that, you know, we're not working for big corporations that have all this money behind them to put your book out there and advertising and all this stuff. And I'm not talking about spending thousands of dollars like Eric kind of touched on, but you do have to be out there and, and get people to know you and your book and what you're all about. Uh, I like what uh, Freestyle Comics who are out there say about themselves. They call themselves the masters of self-promotion. And that's really what you have to be. You cannot just sit here and you know just hope that your book does great. You have to really push it in any way you can, think outside the box, uh, you know, come up with you know ideas that nobody else has done just to get people to notice you in the book.